Hello and welcome to Willow Talk once again. Brad Haddon is back for the second edition of this week. Bradley, welcome back. Bluey stood in for you really well, like almost too well earlier in the week. I'm nervous. I might lose my job, but I'll tell you what I am. I'm excited to have another wicket keeper in here. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Who was it for the Northern Districts under 10s or something like that? Once upon a time, Mitchell Stark joins us in the studio. Welcome to Willow Talk, mate. How are you? Thanks, gentlemen. Yeah, fantastic. Lovely day in Sydney. Chatting with you boys. Tallest former wicket keeper in the history of cricket, perhaps, as well. So you were a keeper as a little kid? Uh, till I was about 15, yeah. 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 And then um, suggested that I might be better suited as a bowler and probably a good, uh, some good advice to take, I think. Well, I've got the opposite story yeah. because I, I wanted to be a fast bowler. And, and at my first ever rep trial I went to, yeah. they, they had to sit down and everyone said, who's your opening batsman and who's your opening bowlers? And my hand was up and I was that small. They couldn't see my hand. And they picked three to go in this net, two to go in that one, another three in this. And, and I was still there with my hand up. And they said, oh, who's the wicket keeper? Anyway, my hand was still up. And they said, oh, that's good. You go over there. And so Starkey might have to give up the gloves because he was too tall. Yeah. I reckon a fast bowler missed. I could have been a um, short, skiddy bowler. Yeah. But, uh, Why I do we never it. see you bowl the nets? You got Matty Wade and all these guys trying to do that. You know, bowl the nets at training. Why? You know I never saw you bowl. The size of the cricket bats, because <laughs> good point. I, I, I would bowl a lot of bounces, um, <laughs> and that would mean a lot in return, and you, you don't want that in the nets. Yeah, you never got the growth spurt. You did. So I think it's all worked out for both of you. We went all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You found your place in the world. Well done. Um, so with Starkey, we're going to talk about absolutely everything from the Ashes to the upcoming World Cup, a uh, bit of golf perhaps. Who gave you your test cap? Looking forward to stories that like that. Anything else you want to talk about? Some controversies as well. You've got some, <laughs> a, a list of names you want to bring up with Starkey and see what his reaction yeah, is. I've got a few names I'd like to, to throw out to Starkey later in the show. We won't throw it straight away, but uh, just to get his opinion on uh, a few. I'm, I'm interested to hear about the World Cup. Um, one, Starkey's dominated every mm. World Cup he's he's gone into. His injury update there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear about where we are in our preparations for that. Well, let's get into it right away. And a reminder, you can follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Willow Talk Podcast. But Starkey, first up, World Cup around the corner. You'll be there, first game against India. That's the plan, yeah. Mm. Yeah, a uh, little bit of rehab at the minute. Um, like a few of us, it's sort of Pat, uh, Smithy, Ash and Ash and Maxi have sort of um, paternity leave. Yep. Um, well, Maxi's got his ankle. His ankle um, as well. The uh, quarter zone apparently he's yep. all right. So. so hopefully he's all right. Hopefully Ash is is ready as well. Mm. Um, what do we got? A few guys just headed over to South Africa for the for the ODIs. So everyone's sort of on track for the guys that aren't already over there. Um, so yeah, hopefully hopefully we're full strength and, and obviously guys are pushing really hard mm. through that that South African series to to ruffle some feathers too. Yeah, it's never a good time to, to get injured. And you know you want to play every game for Australia. But after the the emotion of an, an Ashes series, to, to come back with a, a little niggle, miss a couple of games, it, it's sometimes a good thing to recharge and lead into such a big event like the World Cup. It is. You're, you're spot on. Um, it was such a such a compact series. I yeah. think you had six tests in, in eight weeks. Um, Pat played every test. I played five. Joshy, four. So we all played a lot of cricket in a short space of time. Probably Pat and I probably carried a few things for you yeah. through through most of the series, and and um, when you you I guess have time to reflect and and the body to to sort of have a week to see how it's going mm. post series, everything starts to come to the front. So what was, yeah, nice. What was it feel? Were you c completely cooked in a couple of areas? Were you? Or? Oh, I did. I did my shoulder, um, little sprain in the AC joint, which mm. I had jabbed multiple times in those last two tests. So that was um, once That's that all wore. Trapping. Yeah, I did at Old Trafford and yeah. then, um, some modern medicine got me through, through the oval. Um, so that wore off and, and it's not too bad. That's, it's come back, sort of responded the way we thought Didn't it would. Affect, yeah. Getting no, it was perfect. Swing. <laughs> Mate, that was my preparation for, for the oval test. I didn't train those two days. I went and played two rounds of golf. So, so golf was all right, but bowling problem. I uh, trust me, it was questioned, but, um, <laughs> I played, I, I couldn't, couldn't turn down Sunningdale. <laughs> So, so no Sunday was where booked. you get your quarter zone. Absolutely. Well, I, I didn't have the quarter zone. I, was, I, I had it, still had the strapping on from the test match and the doctor and the physio were in the group behind. So I'm sure they were had an eagle eye on me. Um, <laughs> the range fight. Yeah, yeah. They watched me hit the first couple of shots down the first hole and everything was all right. And so I'm sure they watched me for 18 holes, pulled up fine. Yeah. They were happy with it. So next day I wasn't allowed to train for cricket 
Josh and I went and played another round of golf. So we're good uh, to uh, go for the Oval. Mate, three. you know what? That, that's not the first time that's happened with the stars of our game. Yeah. Mate, Ricky Ponty used to have a bad back. I oh, can't do this. Yeah. But he could always play golf. <laughs> yeah, swing out of his shoes. Uh, yeah. It's amazing when you get injured on a cricket field where the first thing you say to the physio, can I play golf? <laughs> Not when's the third test match. <laughs> well, I still remember that when I busted my finger in Melbourne, I was sitting in the team room and the doc had the images from the scan up on the screen and I was holding his golf club, seeing if I could still swing a golf club. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect priorities. You've got to clear your mind. And yep. golf's the... Uh, exactly the wrong thing to do to try and clear your mind because it muddles your mind more than anything. Best psychologist on tour is a golf game. Yeah, true, true. But how satisfying was the whole experience? Um, leading wicket taker, over 20 wickets, outstanding. You, you, you retain the ashes, so there's a little bit left there. But personally, really satisfying? Yeah, it was, um, it was nice to play, I guess, a bit more of a role than the last time I was there. And um I mean, we've got a fantastic group of, of players and staff now. It was such an enjoyable tour. I think we started on such a high with sort of our lead into the Test Championship, have the, the win over India there in the first game, mm. and then started the Ashes so well. So uh, it's still still very much a mix of um, satisfaction and missed opportunity because mm. we, we retained in 19, and that was still a bit of a an interesting feeling post-series there. Great to retain it, no no, no mean feat there to, to retain for the first time in a long time in England. Um, so yeah, it was certainly a feeling of missed opportunity, but at the same time, England don't have the ashes. So very much mixed, but, uh, on a whole, I think everyone was pretty, pretty chuffed with the, the eight weeks of, of test cricket to come home with the mace and to retain the ashes was a pretty good tour. Love, love that attitude. England don't have the ashes. Yeah. That's how we think of it. That's the only thing I heard there. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, I tell you what though, it was... Obviously, an Ashes campaign is different theatre than anything you play. World Cup probably at home compares to that, but the hype back here was huge. And how, how was it on the ground? It, what 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 is this baseball effect? Have the have the crowd got behind it? Are different people coming into the the game, or or the are the Lords faithful still or dicks? Like, is it <laughs> is it is it a big thing over there? This baseball? Yeah, they're all drinking from the same well. Yeah. Um, Kool Aid. Yeah, the players, the media, the fans, um, which I think is great for the atmosphere of Test cricket. Yep. Certainly, the atmosphere of the Ashes. The you've experienced the yep. the atmosphere of the Barmy Army and and how they all are and how it's slightly different at perhaps Lords. Yeah, it wasn't once the stumping happened, but prior to that, it was. <laughs> so they all have their different feels. Obviously, when you go further north, they get a bit more vocal, and they certainly had a bit of ammunition with the the stumping, but. Yeah, I think it was it was fantastic theatre. I think since we've all been home, we've all made different comments. I've certainly heard it around the golf course or around the beaches that yep. people were glued to the cricket, oh, yeah. lost a lot of sleep, how exciting it was. And, and not only our series, but the women at the same time. Yep. England were trying to say, play that both the same brand of cricket and Australia were trying to play a bit more of a traditional form of cricket. So you had two different approaches to to for us for test cricket and we end up to all, but... It was exciting to to see the differences, and it felt like there was something happening every session, every day. Hmm. It was a it was a big, big series. Was it hard not to get caught up in their style of game? Um, to stay strong to this is what we've done for a long time. We've been successful at Test cricket for for years, playing the Australian way. Was it hard not to get caught up into what they were doing? Um, not initially. I think I think we we all spoke about they're going to play the game differently. They're going yep. to come hard from ball one. So our fields are going to look different. It's yep. not going to be, you know, your four slips, two gullies, mm. because that's what they want. They want the opposition to play into, to try and play normal cricket, and we're going to change the cricket. So as soon as you had guys back, mm. take away their boundary, sure, they're going to score quicker, but they're going to create opportunities. So I remember the first innings of the first test and – well, first bowling innings of the first test, and they declare, right? 70 overs. Mm. Josh Hazel walks off. Awesome. I yeah. love Basball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're going to get off 70 <laughs> overs. How good is this? Yeah. <laughs> right? So they're, they're trying to fast forward the cricket. Yeah. There's no reason we can't score the same amount of runs with our quality of batsmen. Yeah. It might take an extra mm. 20 overs, but we're still going to score the same runs. So we felt their approach to batting was going to create opportunities with the ball. It was just going to look different mm. and to not buy into what yeah. they wanted us to do. It's such a shame that the one of the test matches uh, was ruined by rain to see exactly where we were going to land with this whole series. But, I mean, obviously the incident at Lords will be talked about for 20, 30 years. And 
I reckon if there's no rain in that test match, um, I think it was the fourth test, was it not? Yep. If there's no rain in that, then we're talking about this test series in 20, 30 years. But that kind of watered it down a little bit, pardon the pun. But the Bearstow incident means that that particular moment in time is talked about forever. Now, it's since come out that you're meeting the lunchroom just after. Um, I'd love to be in that oh, lunchroom. And the, the story about I'm they disappointed want, I wasn't there now. Yeah, you weren't there. <laughs> nah. So you didn't come out to, to see what the, the chicken um, coronation chicken was like for, for lunch or anything like that. Oh, we... Were, we because we'd been bowling, so the yeah. the uh, the fourth men brought down the lunch for the three quicks. So, because um, lunch is upstairs at Lords, so we didn't. You have a butler, so you just nah. The, the boys, are, you know, they're. You get I've treatment. been part of the bench for a long time. You know, we're, <laughs> we're all stripes, yeah, exactly. We're all in it together, so they they look looking after us, and we missed out on the fun, but we all heard about it. You heard about it as soon as they came back in. Yeah. So it it, it was the the story has since come out. I think the great cricketer boys put something out with uh, <laughs> Dave Warner. Was asked by Johnny Bairstow, "Are you happy with that?" And Dave Warner just goes, "Yes, very." And everyone <laughs> didn't know what to say, but laughing from within. What a story! Oh, I think the the biggest thing about that that incident is, is you didn't hear from Johnny Bairstow, and, no. and the reason I think you didn't hear from we him, did in the lunchroom. <laughs> he, he tried to intimidate people. You, in, the boys would have had a good laugh. I can imagine how that would. But you didn't hear from him in the whole thing. So yeah. they, they could have ended that right there. But the mm. reason they didn't, I, I think, is they were embarrassed. Mm. He was embarrassed about what he did. If, if you watch the game closely, and you could see a, a, about five overs before, Renshaw run to the stumps to say, Oi, he's creeping out. Mm. And, and Johnny Bear, so I played against him, he, he's, he does sort of get a bit aloof out there and doesn't mm. concentrate on what he's doing. So. Certainly early on, he's full of beans and he's yep. trying to... Nervous energy, hasn't he? Yeah, a bit of nervous energy, but still wants to be busy, and and it's all the movement at the crease. So yeah, I mean, since we've since then we've seen that you know he's tried to do it to Manus, he tried yeah. to do Hetty. So all's fair, fair. Do you fair feel that that for the rest, not the rest of time, but the the immediate future changes the relationships between players? I mean, obviously the the story of the drink and it's been talked about after the fifth test and blah blah blah. But has that changed the dynamic between the two sets of players at all? I don't think one bit. I think um, barring how Johnny felt about the incident, and I have I played with Johnny at, at Yorkshire mm. 12 years ago, so I know him quite well. Um, he would have been disappointed with how it all, what happened and how it panned yeah. out. And obviously Stuart Broad came out and he was pretty vocal uh, to, mm. to Kez and to, to come over in his, that day. But I think post post Lords, um, the rest of the English team sort of let it go and it was, it was done, yep. move on. Uh, the crowd certainly didn't. Um, I think the crowd and, and Johnny probably held on for a bit longer, but the rest of England sort of mm. post post Lords let it go and, and everyone was amicable around the lunchrooms for the rest of the series, around grounds. So uh, I don't think... Well, that's the only thing he held on to during the series. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. I hope he comes down in a couple of, couple of years' time because he will not... Uh, he, he will be reminded of it, put it that you way. You get a right or apply. Yeah. And the Australian fans that we know... Mate, wait to Bay 13, get hold of him. You have a skill at the SCG. We've seen chickens fly over yeah. that uh, fence. Anything could happen. Hey, with your uh, leading wicket-taker uh, effort over there for the Australians, do you, is there anything at the end of the tour? Do you get like a any kind of recognition or anything? Pat on the back. Pat, just a pat on the back. See, I reckon... That, has there should be some kind of award for the leading run scorer in an Asher series and the leading wicket taker. And I'm proposing that we call the leading wicket taker for an Asher series the Golden Terry, after Terry Alderman. <laughs> <laughs> the smiling assassin in 1989 with 41 wickets yeah. and poor old Graham Gooch is still having nightmares about being trapped in front. But, you know, we've got awards for everything these days. So I hereby announce you as the Golden <laughs> Terry award winner for this Much Asher appreciate series. It. <laughs> what about... Bowling over there, Starkey. Do you, you've got a Duke sport, so obviously different. Um, you, you can get stages over there where the ball offers you nothing if the sun comes out. H- how much preparation goes into using the, the Duke sport when it's new, getting used to it, trying to get to reverse swing, but also those moments where absolutely nothing's happening with that ball? Yeah, they're an interesting ball where they're, yeah. they're made slightly differently every year almost, yeah. and they're stamped on the ball which year they're made. So prior to us going over, uh, Pat and I were doing most of our bowling here in Sydney, we had 2018 Dukes balls, which yeah. were swinging around corners, nipping everywhere. Like, how good is this? Is that the one that they used? I think they used it in the last the innings over. of the Oval. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't come to terms with that yet. <laughs> but no, we, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. Not yet anyway. Um, so we thought this is great because it's swinging around corners and yeah. snipping. How good is this? And that was what we used 
uh, the first couple of sessions in England before yeah. we got to, to Lords and got our, our hands on the 23 ball. And obviously we had a few of our guys play county cricket mm. this season over there and talking to Ness about how the ball's slightly different or to Smithy and Marnus who mm. don't want to get stuck in their minds with how cricket goes because you'll be there for, for years. <laughs> but um, so we, we stuck enough. to Ness. Yeah, we, we stuck to talking to Ness and how it was. And, and he reckoned the 23 ball did slightly less. So it um, swung or off the seam? Well, they, they reckon it was a slightly less of a seam on it. Yeah. And it, he found that swung more after about 10, 15 overs. Which, yeah. Yeah. It was noticeable, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. So um, slightly different approach to the 2018 ball where it, it seemed at times it can yep. swing for 80 overs. Mm. We were going to have some of those flat periods where it perhaps didn't do much. England overheads play a big part as well, particularly up north. Yep. So it was, it was somewhere in between the 2018 Duke and a Kookaburra. What about catching a Duke's ball? Um, oh. As in <laughs> that one <laughs> with Ben Duckett. So... Are you don't put it on the ground? Have you have you sent an email to the ICC yet to say, hey, can you change this a bit? Because that's a catch every day of the week. You would is it and isn't, right? Not by the letter of the law, it's not. But by yeah. common sense it is. Well, I mean, I said at the time, mine is as much out as sorry, mine is as much not out as Johnny Bairstow's is out. Okay. To the letter of the law, right? The, yeah, yeah. Yep. At the time I was pretty disappointed because I had full control and mm. I felt like well, apart from the way I went to brace myself, mm. I felt like at no point I was not in control of that ball. So I understand why it was given not out, yep. but it is what it is. Imagine if they gave the Ben Stokes catch out, if they decided that I was I would have been the first one down the stairs, don't <laughs> worry. And, and that's it. You talk about the, the catches, the, the Stokes one. Yeah. Where's your take on this this whole spirit of cricket? I, I, I found it really interesting um, hearing it come out of the, the English mouth. I, I think they were drinking their own Kool-Aid. Yeah. They, they come out after one, oh, if that happened, if I was captain, it wouldn't happen. But the big moment for me is Steve Smith gets caught um, by Stokes or dropped. Mm. There's your spirit of cricket moment right there. Mm. He, he could have said, no, no, don't go upstairs. I've dropped that ball. I wouldn't do it the way the Australians did. But mm. what happened in that moment, you're under pressure. It, it wasn't. Hazelwood Nick and one. It wasn't Camo stuck. It was Steve Smith, our mm. best player. So all of a sudden, their spirit of cricket debate, which they whinge in front of the press, didn't happen there and then. So, yeah, it's just interesting. It looked to me they're just trying to get under the Australian skin all the time. Yeah, it was. It was interesting. That that's that was an interesting one because um, at the time, we all wasn't sure what happened here. Oh, mm. Someone called it out from I can't remember who said it from the change room, but he said, "Oh, he's thrown that up, knocked it's it out of his it. hand." Yeah, mm. and. One of the the next break after it happened, Smithy knew straight away. He's like, nah, I saw it in his face. He knew he didn't catch it. Yep. And then there was, it quickly moved on to the debate of whether they should or should not lose the review mm. because the umpire said he didn't hit it, but clearly he did hit it. Mm. So yeah, it, it all got a bit murky for a moment, but clearly he didn't hang on to it for long enough. Do you know what the spirit of cricket is? Are you, are you sorry, I'll rephrase that. Are you more the wiser about what the spirit of cricket is? After the Ashes as opposed to before the Ashes? Or is it just... It seems to be thing? which which team's the home team, I guess. <laughs> it, if we play within the rules of the game, particularly Ashes cricket, hard yeah. cricket, like end of the series, no animosity. Everyone played within the, the rules and, and well, we sat there too all. So. That's the thing. And it's the man cat debate as well. Mm. It's like, is that in the spirit of cricket? But what's in the rule book? Otherwise, what's the point of having a rule book? You can't have a rule book and a spirit of cricket book because occasionally they're not going to go down the same path. I they? still love the fact that we're walking through Lords after the event and you got seven year old privileged white men in the, the long room, the hyphen, spitting yeah. out red wine, yeah. calling us cheats, <laughs> and Marcus Harris walking through, you made the rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that'll do me. That. <laughs> Was he the most vocal? Uh, I, I don't know what happened with, with Uzi and, and Davey because the you quicks just walked past well. ready for yeah. a sit down. And I saw behind uh, Matty Renshaw, who must have heard something and was pointing <laughs> at someone laughing. And then Marcus Harris was definitely the, the most uh, entertaining for that period of time. Have they had the hearings yet in front of the MCC? 
Yeah, good bacon tyres who got a bit carried they away. They did get a little talking to because the next break, they were all back to just the little golf <laughs> clubs. So, <laughs> little golf club. yeah, threatening with a little removal of their little red membership. You know what? It, it, that was a, a, a big incident there. But my time, I remember being 12th man at Lords and, and Brett Lee saying, watch these members. Yeah. And I said, what do you mean? He said, he was at Fine Leg and they used to get their um, champagne. Oh, they yeah. used to pop the cork. At the field, like they sit there and go, oh, who did that? You, go, you four are drinking a bottle of champagne, and there's four lids there, like cork set. Like, come on, like they they think they can get away with anything in there. Like they they think, oh no, we've we've invented the game. We whatever we do is in the spirit of everything. But mate, they're, they're naughty little men, some of them. <laughs> Fair enough. But overall, so um, you're well over 300 test wickets now. Yeah. Well over the age of 30, sorry, <laughs> sorry to bring it up. You've won Ashes, World Cups, Test Championships. What's what's left? Or is it purely to just enjoy whatever you have left? Yeah, I think partly that. It's, mm. uh, it's a fantastic group to be a part of. It's a lot of fun. We're, we're all sort of a very experienced group now. A lot of us have come through cricket together. You throw in a few guys that are a bit younger like Greeny or who are starting their, their international careers or who've been around the scene for a long time. Um, it's a, it's a fun place to be. We're enjoying our cricket. You know, we've, we've won the test championship, which is a, a big tick for, for us or something we wanted to achieve on this tour. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I thoroughly enjoy pulling on the bag of green. It, I, I still find it was probably the form that it took me the longest to feel like I belonged. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to, I want to try and be good enough to wear that as long as I can, whether it's my body that stops me first or, or my skill, we'll find out. But you originally got it from Richie Benno, your test debut. Now I'm thinking if, if you could choose three or four Australian cricketers that you could, you could get a bag of green from, I reckon Warney's in the conversation. Yep. I reckon he's in the conversation. If Don Bradman was still around, maybe chuck him in and maybe a Steve or a Ricky Ponting. Um, what was that? experience like and can you remember the actual conversation because he's a man of few words he was a man he's a brilliant man of few words that's what made him a great commentator and a, yeah. and a great cricketer it was um it was an interesting stage of of where the group at the time were mm. uh, and we had a new coach we had a few new staff members um and we had on the day we had three three debutants as well so who were the, uh, who were the other two so I had Davey Warner yep. and James Pattinson okay. and myself debut so we had it was against New Zealand at the Gabba the week before we had the A game against New Zealand where it was almost a, a bit of a, a shootout, if you like. Mm. Um, ben, I think Ben Cutting was in the, the conversation as well. And we got told the, the test squad at lunch on day three or four of that, mm. that tour game. And then um, we get our, well, for three of us, we get the first opportunity to be, you know, in our lead up to yep. potentially a, a test debut. And I didn't know where I sat in, whether I was going to get a run or not. And you've, find out the night before, don't sleep much. <laughs> um, and then hot day at the Gabba, day one of the first test of the summer, pretty cool. And it's in alphabetic order. So uh, James Pattinson was first and uh, we had uh, Damien Fleming, I think presented his cap, another Victorian, uh, and then myself. And, and I'd actually sat next to, a, next to Richie on a flight back from Brisbane the year before when we played Sri Lanka in an ODI. Mm. And well, I missed my first flight and ended up sitting next to him on the next flight. So he sort of had a bit of a conversation about, you know, the, the night, game night before and, and whatnot. And little did I know that he was going to be presenting my bag of green. So he, he couldn't find me in the circle. I'm the tallest bloke there. <laughs> he couldn't see. Couldn't see me. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, it was a bit of a blur. I've got it. Um, we all got given the, back then it was CDs. We got burnt onto a CD, the, really? the cap presentation. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's sitting in, in, in the room at home somewhere. But I, it's a bit of a blur how it, what was actually said, not too much. Um, a bit about the baggy green and, and how I think how he got his in part of the, the kit back in the day. Yeah. Um, so got my cap from, from Richie, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then who did we have? We had... So it was Davey, Davey next. Davey was years. presented by Slats. Yep. Slats. That makes sense. Two cannons. <laughs> no offence to the Michael other two. Luke. No offence to uh, Damien Fleming and Michael Slater. You got the pick of the bunch. I was pretty chuffed. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we managed to bowl first too, so the nurse didn't have to sit still for too long. I was happy to hit the, 
the cut stuff in the first over. <laughs> Probably didn't say much for most of the day. We, we did that. Who Jagged a couple of wickets and, and that was it. Did you play this day? Yeah. yeah. Who called your first wicket? Do you remember that? Who called it? Yeah. yeah. Not a clue. Okay. We'll go and find that somewhere. Uh, might be Not Richie. Sure. Could be Richie. Imagine Not that. sure. You've done the double. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, I tell you, it, it's a daunting time to, to get your baggy green. It can, yeah. it can work the other way when you're retired. I, I presented, I, I know Michael Neese's uh, cap in a, in a one day. Mm. You, you're nervous. You, oh, you, yeah. you sit up when you present the cap thinking, oh, what am I going to say? And I, I've seen a couple of different ones. I oh, know. I remember when Ashton Agar got his Glenn McGrath, yeah. mate, you sit there and you had tears going, oh, how good's Pigeon? You give Pigeon a couple afterwards. Then on the same tour, Warney gave Faulkner his. And, and that speech was a, a different style, still meant the same, but he's going, mate, I love the way you play. You're tough. Give it to the Palms here. And you There's just a, couple go, of word, a couple of other words. Yeah, I can't use those. It was so like a Roddy Roode uh, yeah. routine. Yeah, first. but it's, uh, it, it's, it's a it's special moment. I, I remember getting mine and, you make me sound a bit old here, actually, Starkey, when you said, oh, Richie got his in his cricket kit. Well, mine was a bit different <laughs> because mine was in Kinston, Jamaica, and Adam Gilkish had just retired. And it's not a, a batter getting hairs or a bowler. I, I knew I was going to mm. play the test match. So I'd have my baggy green in my bag. So I had to give it to Ricky Ponting, mm. and he had to give it back to me um, <laughs> in the test match. But I, I caused a bit of an uproar, actually, in the tour game. Because they said, um, Steve Bernard, the manager, just said, oh, you know you're playing the test match, put your... Um, so you put, your, put, put your hat on. I said, no, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've waited 10 years to get this. I'm not putting it on till I get it presented. So we, Love everyone it. wore the VB caps in the tour game. And was there a blow up about that? Australia really? of, of, uh, wearing VB caps, Selling the disrespect out. in this. And it was only I because did, you didn't want to, I, I didn't yeah. want to wear it, but i tell you what, it was a double edged sword mm. because VB got that much publicity from it. I had about 10 cases of VB. So You're when I got home out. from the first tour, <laughs> mate, we had a great time. <laughs> Can you do that with a case of VB? Have a great time. Mate, mate after you make your tests. <laughs> it's cold enough. E yeah. Everything sounds good. You still drink VB? Now and then. You look like Two a, is. I think you're a Corona guy. You look like a Corona guy. <laughs> I reckon. Oh, yeah, I am uh, a Corona Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Absolutely knew it. Um, yeah, they're great stories, though. It's like they, you hear it and yeah, occasionally they put it up on social media, but it is such a big thing now that the, the presentation and in a wonderful moment that you'll only have once. Mm. Um, it's fantastic. But right. the, the guys that you came through with, so it, it looks like, especially the bowlers, like yourself, Nathan, Pat and Josh, from the outside looking in, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like you guys will be blokes who will call up each other in 20 years' time and say, want to hit a golf. Absolutely. You're good mates. Yeah, we, we've spent a lot of time uh, on and off the field together. I mean, I, I pretty much grew up through cricket with Josh and, and we both got picked in the under-17s for New South Wales and have gone on since then, sort of through the ranks together, which is, is really cool and um, something I cherish a lot. And Pat's a little bit younger, but he sort of came through the, the same system and yep. Nathan did a little bit differently. He went from riding on the mower to... <laughs> Down in, in Canberra to um, from young to Canberra to South playing Australia. for the Sacker yeah, yeah. and, and then didn't want to face us in games so came and joined us. So, um, <laughs> but no, we, we enjoy the golf. Yeah, you know the odd frosty down the road and and obviously spent a lot of time on tour together. So um, yeah, they're even down to, to trips back to the, the country with Big Hoffer to to spend the weekend. So yeah. um, no, they're they're sort of the relationships that yeah that make make cricket fun. You, you, you've won everything with, with that group. Like, so what, what else is there to, to tick off? You, you obviously got a, a big world cup and that's an, an event in India. And if you can win there, that that's a different level of excitement, but what what's left? I, I know you haven't played IPL for, for nine years to concentrate on, on test cricket, which is, which is great. But do you see yourself having to drop a format to play maybe to get to that hundred test Mac mark? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, as you made mention before, I'm well into my thirties now. So, um, just spitting facts. Sorry. No, we, we, there's a few of us that are well aware we're, we're close to the end and the start and we're having a lot of fun together, playing our cricket, touring, um, on the golf course, whatever it may be. But yeah, I'm, I'm not s sort of one for, for setting yeah. numbers, goals or personal goals or what I want to achieve this year. It's, you know, I've, it's took me a long time to feel like I was good enough for test cricket. So I want to really give that the biggest crack I've got. I've thoroughly enjoyed white ball cricket and it was probably where I, I got my, my main opportunities in as well. So likewise, I've when I've had some time at the IPL, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that challenge and, and I look forward to hopefully going back this year as well. So um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to I'd like to be good enough to, to get to 100 tests, not just 
get to a hundred. I like to be good enough to yep. be picked for a hundred tests. Um, and then the big one, obviously in a couple of weeks is the world cup, which in India just mm. goes to another level. Um, and then you look at the one day format, it's sort of four, four years in between world cup. So where do, where do I see myself in that mix? But I've got to get to the end of this world cup first, but, um, you know, we've got some superstars coming through. You've got your, you know, your Jai Richardson's, your yeah. Sean Abbott's, your Spencer Johnson's, you've got plenty of young guys Lance coming Morris. through. So yeah. yeah, Lancey Morris is going to be a gun. So yeah, I think I, I try not to look too far ahead with anything. Obviously we want to do well in the world cup. Um, then we've got five test matches here in, in Australia and then I haven't actually played a test in New Zealand. So I'm, hopefully I'm oh, on really? that tour and, and look forward to that challenge as well. Oh, wow. Okay. That, those test matches won't last long. <laughs> <laughs> They normally prepare. That might actually change. They, if you see when India go over there, it's a nice green wicket. If, if, if Starkey's going over there, we're only playing two and a half days. <laughs> <test matches. laughs> so IPL, you're going to chuck your name in? Um, and how's are you going to sit at your little table over there for the auction? And... Just, I'm just listening to this answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. some figures in my head. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's been eight years. Um, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm definitely going back in this year. It's... Um, Amongst other things, it's it's a great lead up to the T20 World Cup, so yeah. a good opportunity to to see if, if uh, anyone's interested in in the IPL, um, then lead into the T20 World Cup, and it's a pretty it's somewhat of a quiet winter next year hmm. in terms of, uh, I mean, in comparison to this winter. So um, I think a perfect opportunity to put put my name in. So you don't want one though, you don't want one party interested. What well, one's you, better than none? No, no, you need two. I, if you have two. Then Saki's you got, got eight. You got, you got yourself a little bidding war happening. And we've seen it with a couple of Australian quicks in the last couple of years, Riley Meredith. It would just look like an ego throw between the two of them in that auction. Joe Richardson was caught up in the middle of one of them yeah. as well. And well, next thing he knows, he's got 1.2 next to his name. Well, Sam Curran's the highest paid IPL player. And, and now that Starkey's just said that, <laughs> I'm going to say he's going to become the highest paid IPL. I, I know. I'm just trying to do the figures under the paper. <laughs> <laughs> to see how much we've got left. So, uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's an exciting time. But it's also, it's good to see that test cricket's still the most important form of the game. Like we yeah. talk a lot about the leagues around the world and it's an exciting brand. We're seeing hundreds now uh, playing. But still for Australians growing up and you look at Starkey, what he's done, kids coming through still see test cricket as the as number one. Good stuff. Mitchell Stark, thanks so much, mate. Really appreciate it. And best of luck in India. Can't wait to see you dominate another World Cup. Thanks for having me. And have a lovely day. Hads, can't wait to see you dominate another Willow Talk. Stay safe. Well done, Sagi. Have a good one, everyone. We'll be back next week with more Willow Talk.